morning. I thought we'd start today off with a little bit of an unboxing here. Got something for the shop. It's part of an ongoing project. A little worse for wear on the shipping, but it did make it. This is a squirrel cage fan that I bought, and it's part of a ventilation project for the shop. There's an awful lot of stuff that we do that generate a lot of fumes that you don't want to be breathing in. So my plan for this is to build a ventilated cabinet that I can put stuff in like uh, resin baits that I've cast. When you make those, they're going to off gas for a few days. And so if I can put them inside of a cabinet and have that ventilate directly outside, it'll improve the air quality here in the shop. I can also use it for things that I've painted with non-acrylic paints that off gas for a while. Uh, I'm also thinking I'll probably put my drying wheel in there for my clear coats as well. Anything that produces fumes can go in that cabinet and ventilate. Anyway, I don't plan on working on any of this today. This just came in the mail, so I thought I'd open it and show you and kind of let you know what's coming up. Today, I've got a couple of things I want to work on. I want to get started painting that bass glide bait, and I also want to make a silicone mold for the bluegill. We'll see if we can't push those projects a little bit further forward. So let's get started. I'm going to start putting some paint on this uh, spotted bass lure, but before that, I want to kind of go over my typical paint setup here. Now, I've said it before, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's really important. Do not scrimp on your PPE. Even though we're going to be working with acrylic paints, and those are generally considered non-toxic and all that stuff, you're still atomizing particles of something that do not belong in your lungs. So even with acrylics, I would really recommend wearing a uh, respirator like this. The other thing I do is I have a household HVAC filter here and I've got that in front of a fan. Now that fan is pointed away so that it's sucking air towards it and then what it'll do is it'll just draw all those particles into the filter and capture them there. Uh, over here I have a little bowl of water and then I've also got this little dropper and uh, just a little brush here and a paper towel. All that's for cleaning the airbrush. Of course, I've got my airbrush here. And then I've got vinyl gloves just to make cleanup a little bit easier. I'm going to wipe it down once more with rubbing alcohol uh, just to make sure that this is oil and grease free. And then I'm going to be painting with a few colors here. Here's kind of a quick look at what I'm thinking uh, as far as the color scheme. This is a, a small bass that I caught maybe a couple of years ago, and I've got really good pictures of it. But you can see that the belly is pretty white, and then of course you've got the shiny scale pattern, but that white fades pretty high uh, up into the body here. But then along the top here, it's, it's a little bit hard to separate out the colors because there's a lot going on in there actually. Um, obviously you can see a lot of gold in there. There's some black in there, kind of a hint of green in there. Um, and so that's going to be a little bit difficult to match. So I don't know that I'm going to be too matchy matchy, but I am going to try and mimic this basic idea. Now for this particular lure, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of brush work in there to get everything uh, a little bit more highly detailed. But I feel like if I can get anywhere near this, uh, then this lure is going to look amazing. I'm going to go over the belly area with some opaque white. Next, I'm gonna go over that belly area with some pearl white. And I'm also going to fade that up into the body quite a ways. But I like using pearl white because I feel like it's a very realistic fish color. Next color up is Detail Moss Green. And on this lure, what I'm gonna do is paint this along the back and fade it down into the body a little bit. This makes a really good foundational color. All right, stencil time. 
kind of got a shadow copy of my original drawing. Um, I'm gonna use this to draw on and make my stencil. I thought about it. I'm not gonna make a tape stencil for this one. I'm just gonna cut it out of paper and we'll use that. What we're gonna do is try and get this uh, pattern on here. I can see some little diamonds and spots in there, so maybe what we'll do, we'll just make ourselves some generic diamond stencils here, just a, a little bit of a variation. Same thing with some spots, and then we can use those to kind of sprinkle around up there. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to stop right here today and um, pick this up again later, but I do think we got an outstanding start on it here. I need to make a silicone mold for the bluegill, so let's see if we can make a little bit of progress on that. All I'm doing here is covering up the scale detail that I'm going to be burying into the clay with a little tape so that I don't have to dig all the clay out of those uh, scales later on. If you're interested in how I make my silicone molds, I've got a dedicated video that I made with lots more detail in it. I can put a link to that above in case you want to check it out. Now let's put our indexing keys in there. Believe it or not, I have forgotten to do that before. So I did go ahead and spray this mold a little bit with some mold release and I'm going to finish off this little bit of this uh, silicone rubber that I've got but I did get another batch in case we run out. But I'm going to weigh them that way I know how much I'm going to pour on the other side so it's even. Let's just put a thin little coat over the whole thing. Now I used to give this something like 15 minutes to um, let the bubbles rise up and all that. Um, 15 minutes has worked pretty well for me. I can see them rising right now. But we might even get by with a little bit less. So I'm going to let this set up over the entire weekend. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to let it set the whole time and then come Monday we'll flip it over, pull the clay out and 
do the other side, but I've, I've messed up too many of these things rushing it that uh, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. So we're gonna give it a lot of time to set up. After letting the silicone cure, I pulled the clay out of the mold, cleaned up the master, and applied some mold release. Now I'm pouring the second half, which will give a couple of days to fully cure as well. Okay, it's been a couple of days, and so this bluegill mold should be completely cured and ready to go. Let's open it up and see what's inside. that turned out pretty nice from what I can tell. A lot of detail, I don't see any bubbles. Here I've changed the lighting just a little bit so that maybe you can see it a little bit better. Looks like we got a really good impression on that. So I still need to carve the fin masters and make a mold and pour some silicone fins. So there's a lot to do still, but now we're one big step closer to having a working prototype. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider in doing so. Also, feel free to leave me a comment. I enjoy hearing back from y'all, and we'll see you on the next one.